Uh, now, I've, I know the method to calculate minimum reflux ratio. Right? Next step would be to get the actual reflux ratio right? and then calculate actual number of stages. Right? And that is going to go as input to my simulator. Okay? That is going to go as input to my simulator. So, calculation of actual number of stages. So, the next slide tells you about a calculation of actual number of stages okay, for given reflux ratio. Now, I have a reflux ratio with me because in the last step I calculated minimum reflux ratio. The actual reflux ratio is typically 1.3 to 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. Now, I have the reflux ratio given and we are going to see how to calculate the total number of stages required for the given system. Okay. So, this is the algorithm given here. Okay. Given XF, right? XF is known, that is your feed composition. Q, that is the feed quality is known. Also, R, what is R? Now, the reflux ratio. Okay. I have denoted it as RR somewhere okay, in earlier slides, but R is the reflux ratio. Okay. And then, XD1 and XB1. So, these are the important compositions. Okay, I have already started solving design problem, the top composition, bottom composition is a given, right. But I keep one composition floating, okay, I will come to that. So, once you know R, you can calculate S, that is reboil ratio. There is a direct relationship between the reflux ratio and reboil ratio if you just do overall material balance, okay. If you have constant molar overflow assumption, okay, you can calculate reboil ratio, which is V by B, okay, in terms of reflux ratio, right. So, there is, a, there is an equation, okay. Now, I want to start solving problem for getting actual number of stages. I, have, I know XD1, I know XB1, but I need to know all the end compositions. Right? So, these are the important compositions okay, which are already given by the process requirement. Right? So, the next step is, okay, next step is, I will just say that my XD3, that is, what is XD3? the composition of the least volatile component in the distillate stream okay xd3 right it is zero in the beginning let's let's make this assumption in the beginning okay that xd3 is zero if xd3 is zero right then xd2 will be 1 minus xd1 okay in reality it won't be zero okay i'm going to come to this point later okay but in order to start the calculations, since XD3 is anyway trivial composition, nobody is interested in that because it is the composition of the least volatile component in the top stream. Okay? So, I am just making assumption that it is 0. So, that gives me the starting point for my calculations. Okay? So, my XD2 is 1 minus XD1. So, I know XD2, I know XD1, XD3 is 0. So, I can calculate okay, the bottom composition by overall material balance. Okay, so, all six compositions are known now, right? all six compositions top and bottom compositions are known. I can start solving a design problem. Once XB is known, all XBs, right? calculate the stripping profile or stripping section profile from XB all the way to the stable node. What is stable node? It is feed pinch. Okay? So, that is what I am doing here. See, I have XB, right? the bottom composition. I go on solving this okay, and then solve it all the way till you get a feed pinch. Okay. That is what I do, okay, step by step calculation. Right. You have the stripping section equation and you do this calculation. Any doubt? Straightforward, once you have this point, you have stripping section equation, okay, you do this calculation and get this profile. Right. So, I have this stripping section profile, right. Now, in actual case, a feasible case where my reflux ratio is greater than minimum reflux ratio, what is going to happen? Two profiles are going to intersect, right. Now, I am going to look at rectifying section profile, okay. Rectifying section profile will start from this point. Okay, that is close to the most volatile component. Right? But then 
I am not doing that, I am not actually solving it from here because anyway I have assumed x d 3 to be 0 then it would not come inside a triangle at all, it will treat it as a binary mixture. So, I am not going to solve it from this point right, I am going to adopt a very different method ok. What am I doing here? See the next step locate the point x 0 on the stripping section profile as shown here. Now, we have the stripping section profile, I have located x 0 point ok. Now, stripping section profile had two different parts ok, one part is going towards the intermediate boiling component and the other part is going in this particular direction right. So, locate a point take any point ok, any point on this particular part ok, because the intersection is likely to be here ok. So, I have, I have identified this point, I will change this movement initially it is at point A ok, right, point A where I said my x 0 is lying on point A, right, I have, added, I have just located that point, ok. Now, the next step is to solve for the rectifying section profile in opposite direction, ok. Let us say, well, let us see whether this point A is the intersection or not, intersection of stripping section profile and rectifying section profile. Let us say this point is the intersection, if that point is the intersection then if I solve the rectifying section profile equation from this point onwards in opposite direction ok, I should be able to meet x d right ok. But what happens here? if I start solving rectifying section profile equation in opposite direction from point A ok, I go this way right, I go this way right. So, that means there is something wrong, point A is not the intersection of both the profiles ok. Then I move this point x 0 from A to position B ok and again start solving rectifying section profile equation in opposite direction ok, again the same thing happens right. That means again point B is not the intersection of these two profiles. I move it further, I get this point ok, what happens? Now, it goes very close to the saddle of rectifying section profile and then moves in this direction right, moves in this direction which is what I want ok, right, because my x d is lying here, my rectifying section profile if solved in opposite direction should meet my x d right and this is what is happening at this particular point. What happens later? If I move my point in this direction, suppose it is at point C, right? It is at point C. Then also the rectifying section profile goes in this direction and moves towards XD, not exactly falling on XD. Where is XD? XD is on the binary edge because XD 3 is 0, ok. So, it may not be exactly falling on that particular point, but going, going close to it, right? So, on all the points here after this point. Okay, after this point, I have the rectifying section profile or trajectory going in this direction towards x d which is what I want right, which is what I want. So, that is what I have said in the next step for various values of x 0 that means x 0 I move it on stripping section profile, calculate the rectifying section profile until it intersects the desired distillate composition. <coughs> ok, goes very close to it right ok. Then count the number of stages in each section and also note the distillate compositions of the component 2 and 3 ok. If I start counting stages what will happen? I have shown it here ok. Up to this point, up to this point if there is no 
there is no point calculating number of stages because it is not feasible design right. We have to only look at the points after this where there is a possibility of a feasible design ok. So, this is my first point from which I start doing calculations, I start counting number of stages ok. So, this is that point x 0, this is my x 0 right. I go on counting stages, how will I count stages? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then I move to rectifying section profile, ok. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right. You can count these stages, ok. And I plot this here. This is the total number of stages. So, for x0 here, ok, I have some point here, total number of stages. If I move this x0, inside what happens to total number of stages? This number goes down why? Look at this when I am here my rectifying section profile is going very close to the saddle and at saddle I have many stages right. That is why I have almost infinite stages at this particular point because I am going very close to saddle. The moment I bring this point inside or rather move this in this direction x 0 right, the number of stages would come down ok. At particular point you will see n t going to almost minimum ok. But then after certain value of x 0 that means if I take it to this particular part of the stripping section profile again the total number of stages would increase why? Why do you see this? Sorry, that is true, that is true. So, you see feed pinch here, there are many stages, right? And because see, I am when I am talking about x0 here, right, that means I am here, right? And if I count number of stages you have feed pinch here right and there are many stages there are many stages there ok that is why it goes up again. So, what is a good design? Good design is where I have I have less number of stages ok right. So, I should select my x 0 in such a way that I am in this particular range. I am in this particular range, right? Okay. That is the total number of stages. But I have not answered one question. Okay. We started with what? We started with x d equal to x d 3 equal to 0, right? Okay. But that is not correct, no? See, in this case, what is going to happen? I am going, going to select some value of x0, I am going to draw rectifying section profile, it is going to hit this point and for that particular point xd3 will not be equal to 0, it will have some finite value ok. But all calculations that I have done here for material balance are based on the value of xd3 to be 0 right. But with this procedure I am going to get some value of xd3 ok right. So, there is some discrepancy right. So, what am I going to do later? I am going to repeat the calculations with new x d 3 now ok. Whatever x d 3 I have got here right, I am going to put it here right. In this equation now the new x d 2 is going to be 1 minus x d 1 minus x d 3 right. I will repeat that calculation ok. I go on repeating that calculation and they will have many such plots ok right and I will see I will do this calculation till there is no change in my x d 3 right. This is called as conversions of course right and normally it is observed that within 2 3 iterations you see there is no change because x d 3 is a very small value it does not have much impact on the material balance ok right. So, we do not have to really worry about it. So, this procedure seems to be working well ok 
to calculate actual number of stages right. So, once you have minimum reflux ratio you get operating reflux ratio and calculate actual number of stages with this method and this is applicable to even multi component systems ok. You can write this program for multi component systems say 4 component 5 component and this will work well ok right. So, what is the design method? Determine end compositions by process requirement x d is x b is and d by b degrees of freedom analysis right. Identify whether the split is direct, indirect or transition that is very important. Determine feed pinch and saddles of the concerned sections independently without actually doing step by step calculations right. Vary the reflux ratio and generate R versus determinant E1, E2. If it is multi component system, then if it is four, if it is four component system, then it will be E1, E2, E3, right. So, this plot is generated, ok. Get R mean the reflux ratio at which this determinant is equal to 0. Determine actual number of stages, the method that we just seen for R is equal to 1.3 to 1.5 times R minimum, ok. Once you have actual number of stages, now you are ready for simulation, rigorous simulation, ok. Then I can go to a commercial simulator like Aspen, Hisys, Pro2, ChemCAD, whatever, right. And I give this data to the simulator because simulator will ask me the input, how many stages, ok, what is the reflux ratio. Because it is a virtual experiment, no, these are the all decision variables, design is in front of you, right. So, you give this input to the simulator and see the x d that I started with, the x d the design requirement that I started with is same as that given by the simulator. It may vary because now you are incorporating energy balance, you are incorporating probably the pressure drop, okay, efficiency of stage because now in this entire exercise I have assumed a stage to be an equilibrium stage right ok. So, we will relax all those assumptions in simulation because anyway like I am going to take help of computer right. In design exercise also that we are taking help of computer to some extent right, but not the computational requirement is not as high as that in simulation because simulation is solving all the equations simultaneously you have many equations sometimes dealing with thousand equations ok depending on how many components you have how many stages you have right ok and depending on the complexity of the model. So, that is the procedure ok and more or less the same procedure is applicable to non ideal systems ok. Now, whatever we have seen so far is for ideal system yesterday there was a question that can I use Underwood's equation, can I use Fansky equation, how, it, how is it different from this method ok. Of course, in terms of methodology it is totally different ok, Underwood's equation they have already derived it ok and you have to solve those equations for getting the root and just put that in the equation and you will get a minimum reflux ratio ok. It is a very simple method, why, why to go for this. As far as ideal system is concerned you can use Underwood's equation, you can use Fensky equation to calculate minimum number of stages ok, but if the system is slightly non ideal then it fails right, because Underwood's equation uses alpha right, the moment I use alpha I am assuming that the system is ideal ok, right. So, whatever I have explained so far is for ideal system ok. But when you have ideal system in front of you like say benzene, toluene, xylene, ethanol, propanol, butanol ok. If you have ideal system in front of you, you may not go for this ok or you need not go for this particular method. But if you are not sure whether the system is ideal or not, most of the time the system is not ideal. It, if you are in the refinery fine, but if you are in the, you are in any chemical plant fine chemicals ok you are always dealing with polar components and components are of different nature ok right. You are doing a reaction and then separation right. 
reaction and separation. So, in reaction you get the mixture consisting of components with different polarities. So, there will be non ideal interaction the system is quite likely to be non ideal right. So, the separation is most of the time you will deal with non ideal systems may or may not form azeotropes, but it will be non ideal that is why Underwood's equation, Fansky equation all that FUG method okay, uh, which is a semi empirical method okay, may not work for such systems that is a limitation okay, that is a limitation those methods. Now, what we have learned here we can extend it to non ideal systems. So, this particular methodology has a potential okay, to incorporate non ideal systems under its umbrella okay. Because as far as vapor liquid equilibrium is concerned, fine, what is the difference between this and non ideal system? Only the vapor liquid equilibrium methodology is going to be same. So, where do I use vapor liquid equilibrium in all this calculation? When I do that stage by stage calculations, right? Rectifying section line, stripping section line, okay. So, I go and get those points by simultaneously solving material balance and vapor liquid equilibrium. So, only I have to replace that model okay. instead of using y i is equal to alpha i x i divided by sigma alpha i x i, I will use I will use some other model thermodynamic model. It can be it may be based on EOS approach equation of state approach or it can be that activity coefficient based approach okay. right. So, for activity coefficient I can use say Wilson model, Morgan model, Uniquack model, Unifac whatever. So, if I just replace my VLE model by the one which is mean for non ideal system okay, same method can be used right. So, this method has wide applications you can very well appreciate that because in this case I am not really taken help of really anywhere in devising or in formulating the methodology right ok. So, let us see what happens in non ideal systems not so easy I cannot say that now it is up to you ok just use this method for non ideal systems because the main problem in non ideal systems is the formation of azeotrope. Okay. So, when you have formation of azeotrope you should be very careful while calculating number of stages and everything it is fine, but the main problem with non ideal system is the feasibility. Okay. Feasibility is an issue in non ideal systems all these calculations are possible when I know okay, the operation is feasible that means I can separate pure A I can separate pure B that is the assumption I made here right direct split, indirect split I say okay, x d 3 is 0 I can assume that my point is in the corner okay, like very close to most volatile component when can I say that when there is no formation of azeotrope, but when you have formation of azeotrope you should be very careful right. So, the feasibility issue would come in picture right. So, next part we are going to see how this method can be extended to non ideal systems in non ideal systems you have non azeotropic and azeotropic right. Non azeotropic again it is not much of a problem except you have one, once you have tangent pitch of course, of course uh, you will face some problems, but normally we do not realize such systems in reality where you have multi component system with tangent pinches and all that ok. Uh, but there is a method ok we are not going to uh, cover that uh, in the interest of time, uh, but most important system is where you have formation of azeotropes. Okay, right. Uh, when you have formation of azeotrope, how this method would be extended to non-ideal systems? Okay, let's go go back to McCarthy again. Okay, uh, of course, here as I said before, in what way the non-ideal systems would be different from ideal systems? Presence of tangent pinches or presence of azeotropes. Okay, right. When you have as I, as I told you before this is not uh, so common in multi component systems, uh, but still there are methods to uh, deal with the tangent pinches and uh, I am not going to cover that part 
in this particular program. It is given in this particular book uh, and if you have any queries you can get back to me on this. But what is important is this, okay, where you have presence of azeotropes, what is the typical feature of azeotropic system? You have distillation boundary and feasibility issues. Let us go back to McAphill method, okay, binary system. There is so much to learn from McAphill method, okay, right. Though it is for binary systems, we can extend all those concepts to multi component systems. This is your azeotropic system, right, where you have formation of azeotrope, a minimum boiling azeotrope, okay, a minimum boiling azeotrope. This is your XF, this is your XD top composition, XB bottom composition. Now, can we design a simple column? I am not talking about azeotropic distillation and all. Can I design a simple binary distillation column to achieve this separation? Can I do that? Is it possible? It is not possible, it is not feasible. That is a feasibility issue, right. I am talking about feasibility, feasibility and all. This is what it is. It is not feasible design at all. Thermodynamics or vapor liquid equilibrium puts a constraint on you, okay, so that I cannot cross this boundary. This is the distillation boundary. This is the distillation boundary defined by the azeotrope, okay, defined by the azeotrope. So, if I am in this particular region, suppose my XB is here, I cannot get XD in this region. So, there are two regions, region 1 and region 2. The answer is no because there exists a distillation boundary. Okay. Now, what is distillation boundary? It divides the composition space in two regions. The two regions, as I said before, the operating lines from one region cannot cross the boundary to enter another region. Okay, and that's why I don't have direct connection between these two, XD and XB, right? Okay, it's very well known. It's quite straightforward. We know all this. But then I am going to extend this concept to multi component systems. The same would be true for multi component systems, presence of azeotropes. Now, in this case, unfortunately, you have possibility of formation of many azeotropes. As I said before, if you have terminal system, can you imagine how many possibilities? You have three binaries, right? In terminal system, you have three binaries. So, you may have three binary azeotropes. You may have ternary azeotrope, all three components forming an azeotrope. The example is say butyl acetate, butanol, water, okay. benzene, ethanol, water. Okay. You have ternary azeotrope also, and then you have various combinations of this, right. That means one binary, one ternary, two binaries, one ternary, only two binaries, okay. Then all three binaries plus ternary, only three binaries, right. So, many possibilities and every system will be different, right. It is a very interesting situation. So, we have to be very careful while dealing with azeotropic multi component system. And I am only talking about ternary system. You can imagine if you have four component, five component, how many azeotropes possible and there are many possibilities, right. Okay. Why do we learn residue curve map? The answer is very simple to know whether the distillation boundaries are there or not. Okay. Once I know the distillation boundary is there, then I should be very careful the first issue of feasibility would be solved and later on it is just a calculation of minimum reflux ratio and number of stages. The same procedure will be valid okay, what we have done. So, why we are learning all this? The, the reason is to just know whether the design is feasible or not, whether there are distillation boundaries or not, okay, whether there are distillation regions or not. Okay. That is the only purpose. Okay. It is an effective tool to assess, oh, this problem here, assess the feasibility of separation. Okay. It is a representation of vapor liquid equilibrium on the ternary diagram. So, it is nothing but just the representation of vapor liquid equilibrium curve. Okay, we will see what it is actually, 
but it is one way of knowing the vapor liquid equilibrium curve in the residue curve map. Now, I told you X A versus X B diagram, the first point that I made when I introduced this new re reference frame, I said that I cannot visualize the vapor liquid equilibrium on ternary diagram, right? because I am looking at X A versus X B, there is no Y there. right? But still this concept, okay, residue curve map tells you about the vapor liquid equilibrium on the same diagram X A versus X B. Okay? Let us see how. Okay? That is the purpose and once I can see vapor liquid equilibrium on X A versus X B, then I know the feasibility. Right? I know whether the distillation boundaries are there or not. Like in McCarthy, I, I know okay, it is intersecting the diagonal, so there are two different regions. Y versus X, it is intersecting the diagonal, I can identify the location of azeotrope in McCarthy, right? How do I identify the location of azeotrope in the ternary diagram that I have defined? Okay, let us see, residue curve map helps you. Following set of equations is solved and mapped on the composition, which are these equations? Let us see. I have a still okay, liquid mixture present, right? Then I heat it, it is boiling. Right, and I take the vapors out. Okay, very simple system, batch system. I charge the still, I vaporize it or boil it. I take the vapors out. Okay, and these vapors are taken out at constant flow rate V. Right, constant flow rate V. Now you may ask me, like if I start heating how to maintain this flow rate, right? because the latent heat of vaporization would change because the composition is changing as the time progresses. Fine. So, I have some control okay, such that I take care, okay, I adjust the heat input in such a way that this vapor flow rate is constant. Okay, right? All right. So, this is V and it has certain composition Y, I. Right? When I say Y I means if there are many species, I represent a species, right? The composition in the still is X I, right? The composition in the still is X I. Now I want to write a model for this system. I want to write some equations. Okay, material balance, the overall material balance, and the component material balance. Okay. Right? Can I write equations, overall material balance, how the things will change with respect to time? Suppose M is the hold up, M is the hold up, I have dM by dt is equal to negative of V, correct. Okay? because hold up is going to change and it is going to decrease with respect to time right? and it will depend on how much vapor I remove, the rate of removal of vapor or material through vapor phase because no other outgoing stream, only vapor is going out. right? This is one equation, overall material balance. Now, I will write component material balance. For species I, I have D x i m by d t equal to v into y i, right. I am writing for a particular component i, i varies from 1 to 1 to c or c minus 1, okay, because if I use summation constraint, I do not need to write this equation for all the components, I will write it for only C minus 1 component. For ternary system, I will have two equations, right. The third will be calculated by the summation constraint, right. Now, can I simplify this? I just expand this m dxi by dt plus xi dm by dt is equal to minus vi, right. Okay. I have an expression for this. 
I will just substitute for that okay, m dx i by dt is equal to v x i minus y i. Can I do that? I have just taken one jump, okay, omitted one step. I can do this, right? I can write this. Okay. Can I simplify this further? I non-dimensionalize this. If I non-dimensionalize this, then it becomes dxi by say d zeta is equal to xi minus yi. What is d zeta? D zeta is equal to d zeta is equal to v by m d t. Right? Yeah, zeta is a dimensionless time. Okay, zeta is the dimensionless time. Okay, I'll talk about it in detail. What it means? But you have this equation. You have this equation. Very simple equation. dx by d zeta is equal to x i minus y i and this is nothing but residue curve map. Okay. Why it is called residue curve map? Because I am looking at the composition of the residue. Okay. I am looking at the composition of the residue, how it changes with respect to time. Okay. This particular equation tells me how it changes with respect to time because x i if I solve this equation, this is a differential equation, okay, ordinary differential equation. How many equa such equations I have? I have two equations for a ternary system or C minus equation for a C component system, right? And I solve this equation, there are many techniques to solve this equation, this simple initial va value problem ODE, ordinary differential equation. And if I solve these equations with respect to time or non-dimensional time, right? what do I get? I get the relationship between x and t, right? how the different compositions they change with respect to time in this particular still. Okay? But look at this equation, what do you have here? It depends on what? Now this y and x, are they related to each other? If I have proper contact here, okay, there are no mass transfer limitations here, y and x are related to each other through equilibrium, vapor liquid equilibrium, right? Okay. So, y is related to x. So, once I know x, I can calculate y, right? I can calculate y. So, this particular moment of x with respect to time will depend only on vapor liquid equilibrium right so the solution of rcm the solution of rcm will depend only on vapor liquid equilibrium or in other words i say that residue curve map is indirect representation of the vapor liquid equilibrium curve right or it's one way of representing vapor liquid equilibrium I hope it is clear. Now, what happens at azeotrop? Now, what is the condition of azeotrop? X and Y? X i equal to Y i, right? X i equal to Y i. What happens in this equation? When X i becomes equal to Y i, moment is, yeah, right hand side is 0, that means dx by d zeta is 0, that means your residue curve does not move or it goes very close to that point and then goes away from it. Right? Again you have possibilities, you may have stable point, you may have saddle and you may have unstable point. Okay? Right? 
x is equal to y at pure component x is equal to y always right when I say I have pure component suppose I take a here I do not have b and c x is equal to y right pure component. So, all suppose you have terminal system all three components you have x equal to y, but apart from these three points in the ternary diagram a b c there are other points also where x becomes equal to y which are these points azeotropes ok right. In the Kaplan method you have pure points where x, x is equal to y right. At this point x is equal to y, at this point again x equal to y, at this point again x equal to y, right. In ternary diagram, at this point x is equal to y, I am not seeing y, but I am sure x is equal to y at pure component, at this point x is equal to y, at this point x is equal to y, ok. And suppose your azeotrope form you may have certain point inside a triangle if there is a ternary azeotrope or if there is a binary azeotrope, if there is a binary azeotrope here, here you have certain points there where x, be x becomes equal to y right <coughs> ok. How to identify these points ok, let us see. So, this is your equation for RCM you have derived it already. Okay. You have a still you are taking vapor out which has composition y and then this is your equation very simple equation ok. But as I said before it is a representation of the vapor liquid equilibrium curve because the entire course or rather the, the way x will change will depend on VLE nothing else right ok. Now, can I plot this on the ternary diagram ok. Now, in this case you have this zeta ok right? this is your dimensionless time, but if I want to plot it on a ternary diagram there is no zeta there no, there is no zeta there I am plotting it for x a and x b right in a ternary diagram it is x a and x b. So, even if I solve these equations right if I solve these equations Suppose there are two equations for three component system, what do I get? Zeta for different zeta values, I get x a, I get x b, and of course, x c would be 1 minus say minus x b, right. So, I am going to get for different values of zeta, I am going to get different values of x a, x b, and x c if I solve this equation this is ODE initial value problem right. And once I have this table ok, I can plot x a versus x b right. I use these two columns x a column and x b column to plot it on the ternary diagram right what how will it behave on ternary diagram. Suppose I start with any particular point it needs the starting point initial value problem it needs initial value no. So, I start with some point here ok I go on solving this equation I go on solving this equation where will I go in which direction will I go will I go in this direction will I go in this direction, will I go in this direction, will I go in this direction, can you tell me for ideal system let us not worry about non ideal initially, where will I go yeah you, you like you definitely go in this direction you will not go in this direction why because I am looking at the composition of still ok residue ok it will move towards the 
either towards the intermediate boiling or towards the least volatile right. In fact, it is going to follow the same behavior as that of the rectifying section profile. It will initially move towards intermediate boiling and then will move towards right. And what is the final point where will it stop? So, it is gone here is going to come down where will it stop? Huh? Least volatile components it will stop at point C it will not stop in between then I do not have feed pinch there like what I get in rectifying section. Why do I get feed pinch in rectifying section because you have the material balance line equation ok instead of and that depend on the reflux ratio right I do not have reflux ratio here just look at the equation ok the system is different the physics is different but equation is similar ok I do not have reflux ratio here. So, my feed pinch is nothing but the stable point here ok right is equivalent to the stable point here I hope it is clear. So, any point I start with I am going to go to this point if I start from this point I am going to go here I am going to, if I start from this point I am going to go here right and now I am going to show some arrows it tells me the direction as well ok right. Suppose I am on this binary edge forget presence of component C I start with A and B I know A is more volatile what will happen I will go in which direction right because A is more volatile this is A this is B and this is C A is more volatile. So, I will move in this direction on binary edge. If I start with binary mixture of A and C, I will move in which direction? Right. If I start with binary mixture of B and C, I will move in this direction. Look at the arrows. Okay. Let me complete this diagram. If I start solving residue curve map in opposite direction, where will I go? Yeah, there is no other way, there is no other point, okay. All the residue curves will go and meet point A, right. What does it mean? If I start with pure A, will I go in this direction? No, right. If I start with pure A, what will happen? There is no B and C, right. I will, I will get only A, I will remain there itself, okay. So, when I extend these residue curve maps in backward direction towards point A does not mean that all the residue curves are starting from exactly from point A. So, if you just expand this it is like this your point A is here right we are going very close to A that means you have a system or your mixture with A composition 99.99999 ok not exactly 100 all right if it is pure A then uh, there is no question of ternary system it is just a single component system right. But these points are ternary points ok. So, that is the meaning of it right. So, this is your residue curve map this is your RCM ok this is your residue curve map for ideal system what if you have azeotron ok. So, ideal system this is a residue curve map ok <coughs> ideal system. Now, before we go ahead let us try and understand ok this point is never realized when we solve residue curve map equation right. So, this point is called as unstable point or unstable node ok right. When I go on solving the equation ok a stage comes when the moment is stopped right this point is called as stable point and 
depending on where I start, suppose I start very close to this binary age and go on solving the equation, I may realize a point, okay, right, there the moment is very slow, but then it takes the course from there and it goes to point C. What is this point? This point is called as saddle, okay. So, what we learned earlier for rectifying section profile, stripping section profile, you see the similarity, right. But of course, now the behavior is independent of the reflux ratio, right. The behavior is independent of the reflux ratio. Unstable point, saddle, stable point, right, okay. Now, there is a mathematical condition, of course, I am not going to get into that. But if you see the right hand side x minus y, if you take the Jacobian of this Jacobian matrix and find out its eigenvalues, okay, all the eigenvalues negative means the stable point, all the eigenvalues positive means unstable point, some of them are positive, some of them are negative means the saddle. Okay. So, you can independently find out whether a given point is saddle, stable or unstable just by looking at a Jacobian of x minus y, okay, right. Let us go ahead, see the emphasis is more on understanding the concept as I said before you need to work on this okay, and then only you will uh, have mastery over it. So, I am trying to tell you the similarity between residue curve map and the rectifying section profile and stripping section profile because now I need to move ahead and correlate it with the column behavior because I am going to use this concept for knowing the column behavior. I want to design a column, right. I have just looked at the still in which I am boiling the mixture and all that, right. One thing you would have noticed now is there is no zeta appearing here, I am just plotting x a versus x b, okay. So, I am not worried about zeta and looking at the nature of this particular uh, diagram or map, I know something about a vapor liquid equilibrium. Suppose I get this type of RCM, right, I am sure the system is ideal, I am sure the system is ideal or non azeotropic for that matter, okay non azeotropic. If there was some azeotrope, then I will realize that point somewhere because my moment will be restricted. I do not see any distillation boundary here. I am going to give the example later what happens if you have azeotrope. I do not see any boundary here, okay. So, the system is ideal. The moment I see the residue curve map, I get some idea about the system vapor liquid equilibrium. So, that is what I was telling you. Even if I am not plotting y here, even, even if I am not plotting vapor liquid equilibrium here, I get some idea about the vapor liquid equilibrium of the system, right. This tells me that there are no boundaries, there are no azeotropes. If there is azeotrope, we will have a different RCM, we will see, okay. Before that, let us look at the RCM, the relationship between RCM and column profiles, okay. As I told you, in column profiles you have reflux ratio, in stripping section you have reboil ratio, but then if we make reflux ratio infinity, what will happen? What will happen to this? This will become for r equal to infinity, this factor r by r plus 1 is 1, right. Very high value of reflux ratio, r by r plus 1 will be 1, and this will be. 0 because you have in denominator you have infinity. So, this becomes 0. So, these two equations at infinite reflux ratio will get reduced to the residue curve both the equations because now they are independent of reflux ratio and reboil ratio, right. Of course, this equation in the differential form, this equation is a discrete form, okay. So, I will just spend 2-3 minutes to show you the derivation, okay, how to correlate these two, okay. But from this slide, it is known that the rectifying section profile and stripping section profile under extreme conditions, that means at infinite value of reflux ratio, okay, will boil down 
or again large number of stages will boil down a single equation that is of residue curve map ok right. So, that is the relationship between column profile and RCMs and I am going to use this concept later to synthesize a sequence ok column sequence for a ternary system azeotropic system. So, I have rectifying section profile equation y n plus 1 i is equal to r by r plus 1 x n i plus x d i r plus 1 ok. I want to see whether I can convert this equation to residue curve map. Now, the condition first condition is r is tends to infinity ok. What do I get? n plus 1 i is equal to x n i right because this becomes 0 this becomes 1 at infinite reflux ratio same is true for stripping you can do it separately ok. Now, this equation I am saying it is equivalent to d x i by d zeta is equal to x i minus y i. Is that true? Okay. I just instead of this equation, I write it as n plus one i minus y n plus one i is equal to x n plus 1 i tell me whether it is true or not. Can I do this? I have just multiplied it by minus 1 both the sides and then added x n plus 1 i on both the sides right. So, I can convert this I can write this particular equation ok. All right. Now, if, ha if you have a sufficiently tall column, okay, I'm just divided by one. Okay, I can divide it by one, not a problem. Okay, if I have tall column with say 100 stages, okay, 200 stages, or infinite stages, okay, that one is a very small number. One is very small number. That means for a very tall column 100 stage column I am just looking at one stage ok I am just looking at one stage that means a differential element of that column ok right. Can I convert this to delta x divided by delta h huh? I can do that no delta h of course has no unit but this is delta x that means the change in composition along the height of the column n plus 1 n right divided by delta h very small number for a very tall column right for a very tall column. So, I can, I can write this as a differential delta x by delta h ok. So, what is this now in a very tall column you have x minus y you have x minus y equal to this differential and what do you have here? you have x minus y equal to this differential right. Only difference is now instead of delta h you have delta zeta there, but anyway on RCM or in a triangle or ternary diagram plot I do not plot zeta I am only interested in x versus x x a versus x b right ok. So, there is a direct relationship between residue curve equation and the column profile as far as this ternary diagram is concerned right. I hope it is clear this is basically the transformation of discrete dynamic approach to continuous dynamic approach yeah. 
So, this is where I will stop. You have his profile now relationship between residue curves and operating lines. Okay. Now, look at the residue curve, you have a residue curve map, I have just plotted the operating lines or other trajectories of rectifying and stripping sections. Look at the similarity and look at the difference as well. Now, rectifying section profile will go this way, compare it with residue curve, you have residue curve also going this way. right? So, rectifying section profile will follow the residue curve in terms of its direction, but depending on how much is the reflux ratio, it will go away from the re residue curve because in rectifying section equation you have re reflux ratio. So, finite reflux it would not exactly fall on the residue. At finite reflux ratio, if you start on the same point, residue curve will move this way, whereas rectifying section profile will take a different path. It depends on your reflux ratio. If it is infinite, yes, then it will follow the residue curve, right? And same is true for stripping, but of course, stripping now it is going to go in opposite direction. Now, stripping section profile start with XB but it will go in opposite direction as that of the residue curve because in stripping section you start with the least volatile component and go towards a more volatile uh, mixture. right? Whereas, in rectifying you start with more volatile that is XD and go towards less volatile. Look at what happens to temperature. In the residue the temperature is going to increase with respect to time. right? it will increase right because you have less volatile component getting accumulated or increasing rather with respect to time. So, the temperature will increase with respect to time in residue curve. In rectifying section profile when you go from top to bottom the temperature will increase right. Rectifying section you start with XD lowest temperature at the top the temperature is lowest right. When you go down it will increase. So, that means there is a similarity between rectifying section profile and residue curve in terms of temperature, the way temperature changes, right. I hope it is clear. That is why rectifying section profile follows residue curve in terms of its direction. It will overlap on residue curve only when the reflux ratio is infinity, okay. Whereas, in stripping section, temperature is high. And as you go up okay, along the height, temperature goes down. So, you are going exactly opposite to residue curve. right? So, I have got vital information now. If I plot the residue curve, it will not only tell me whether there is a formation of azeotrope or not, but then it will also tell me the moment of a direction for the moment of rectifying section profile and stripping section profile. Okay. Then the next question is how to use this information to design a column for azeotropic systems. Okay. Uh, as far as calculation number of stages is concerned, it is going to be same as what we have learned before, but when it comes to feasibility, okay, we need to use the information which is obtained from residue curve map. So, it becomes now our tool, our main uh, I would say tool or base okay, on which further analysis will be developed for. Uh, azeotropic and extractive distillation systems. Okay. So, in the next lecture we will look at azeotropic and extractive distillation.